You are listening to The Real Ethereal with Laura Boone, where spirituality meets reality, only on the Lighter Side Network. Visit us online at thelightersidenetwork.com and subscribe to the Lighter Side Network on Vimeo. The Lighter Side Network, where the everyday meets the extraordinary. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Boone. This is my very first episode of The Real Ethereal Show. I cannot believe it. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so glad to be a part of the Lighter Side Network, um, and thank you, Jamie Butler, for this opportunity. It's an amazing group of women, and it's an amazing group of shows, and I'm thrilled to be here with all of you, and thank you for watching. Um, today, for my first show, what I wanted to do is talk about my story, talk about my gifts, talk about my life, um, and then talk about what my show is going to be about so that you guys can know um, what you're going to find when you watch The Real Ethereal Show. So the first thing I want to start with is my psychic and intuitive gifts. I have clear sentience and I have clairvoyance and I'm also starting to do channeling. Today, I'm going to answer a lot of frequently asked questions. One of the first questions that I get is about what is clairsentience, what is clairvoyance, and how did you know that you had those things? Um, I really wasn't fully aware that I had these gifts until I was older, although I had the signs at a very young age. And I do readings, and a lot of people um, talk about their kids, and that their kids are having issues, and, and they wonder if they have these things, they're clairvoyant or clairsentient, or that they're sensitive. And um, it's been very rewarding for me to be able to help parents, and then also I counsel kids. Um, who are having these sorts of issues to learn how to incorporate their gifts into their life, learn how to protect themselves, and also learn how to use it as a gift because it's not a burden um, necessarily. If you learn how to govern it and you learn how to incorporate it into your life, um, it can be a very great gift that you can use to make the world a better place. You can use it to help others which is what I do in my readings. And it's hopefully what I'm gonna do with this show. That's a really big goal of mine. It's part of why I'm here. So how did I know I was clear sentient? Well, first of all, let me tell you what clear sentient means. Um, clear sentient, well, all of the clairs, and when I say clear, it's spelled C-L-A-I-R. All of the clairs, um, it means psychic, and then they put it in front of a sense. So there's clear audient, which is psychic hearing. There's clear voyant, which is psychic seeing, um, clairsentient is psychic feeling. So another common word for it would be empathic. So it's an emotional psychicness. Um, that is a wonderful thing, but it's also a very tough thing. And I think a lot of people have this and they don't know it and it could cause them a lot of problems until they become aware of it. And I also think it's society at large, I, it's my hope that society at large will um, begin to call this what it is and acknowledge it as an experience that people are having rather than just labeling them with a mental illness or depression or that they're too histrionic or too emotional. So what are some of the signs that you're clairsentient or empathic? And I'm going to use my own experience, you guys. Um, I'm a very outgoing social person, but I need a lot of time alone. So interestingly, I'm an extrovert, but I feel, I get really tired and I feel overwhelmed. And when I was younger, I spent a lot of time alone and I didn't understand that, um, it was really because I was empathic. And what that means is you kind of walk around in this world and you're like a big emotional sponge. And especially as a child, you don't know where your emotions begin and someone else's 
begin and they mix together and you don't know when you're in a room or in a family unit with someone who is um, angry or depressed or sad you start feeling sad or angry or depressed and you feel very overwhelmed and you can't tell that it's their emotions versus your emotions so a lot of times when I counsel children or families we talk a lot about that it's it's a really good practice to start trying to separate um, what's mine from what's yours. So as an adult, I've really learned how to do that and it's made me much healthier and happier. So you may have seen me on Jamie Butler's show, The Lighter Side. We have done episodes on psychic protection and they were very popular. And psychic protection a lot of times is for, um, to help people with the empathic side of this gift. It helps you um, kind of keep, I call it like a, a screen porch. It kind of keeps the um, everybody else's negative energy out or spiritual spirits negative energy out, but it lets the fresh air in. So that is really a practice. And I'm gonna do some episodes on really how, um, how to do that in your own life or to help your child or to help your partner or to help somebody you love do that. It's really important. Um, as I learned how to be um, healthier with my empathic self, I learned really how to use this as a gift, as a psychic gift. And so in my readings, I can link into other people's emotions that I haven't met yet, family members. Um, I also link into spirits that have crossed over or guides emotions. So they communicate with me through emotions. And I'll tell you, it's really one of my strongest things that I do. And it's very hard to describe. And one of the reasons why I really want to describe this to folks is that um, I had never really heard about this. And I guess I was probably, I don't know, 21, 22 years old. And I was literally like looking online at psychic things, just looking, reading. And when I first saw the word clear sentient and I read what it meant, I got tears in my eyes. You know, there's a powerful, I think it was in Japan um, and also in the Jewish tradition and Jewish faith, um, there's a huge power in naming something. So when you can put a name on something, it helps you focus and it helps it feel more, um, it, it can help you to incorporate it into your life. So I hope somebody can name that in themselves. Because I think there are a lot of people who are walking around with clear sentience, but it's not um, one of the more obvious psychic abilities, so it can get very muddled. And um, I'm going to talk a lot about that on my show. So the other um, clear that I have is clairvoyance. And so a lot of people kind of use the word clairvoyance for anything psychic, but I really like liken it to... Um, uh, psychic seeing because voyant in Latin or it's a derivative of a Latin word that means to be able to see so a lot of times um, spirit comes to me or my guides come to me or I get images and they communicate to me that way so it's almost like I see a slideshow um, as I'm doing readings for folks or when I'm talking to people sometimes I'll get images and so my clairvoyance along with my clairsentience is their languages that I get um, in my intuitive abilities that are, um, that are helpful to me to be able to help other people. So um, another frequently asked question is what are some of the experiences that I've had where I learned that I was psychic? Because I really walked around um, growing up and didn't know that I was and didn't um, wasn't able to express that because it was just my experience so you know I didn't know that's what I was um, I initially I had a lot of psychic dreams and also I had um, I had other things that would happen at night and I I think a lot of people first are initiated with their own psychic abilities um, at night because what happens when we sleep is we we get into what is known as a hypnagogic state which essentially makes us more open to the other um, information that we get in other ways besides just our three-dimensional conscious senses so you get more open to um, psychic senses 
Um, I would have psychic dreams. Um, sometimes my psychic dreams, um, I was very cold. You know, a lot of times, and I've heard that this is common, that people who are having psychic experiences, you might feel cold in a room um, because there might be entities that are strong in a room. You might even feel cold before you get a psychic vision or you might be thinking about something or daydreaming and it's a psychic vision and you all of a sudden you get the chills. And that's a very common, normal experience for people who are getting psychic visions. Well, I was um, woken up frequently um, with freezing cold, um, even in a really hot room under lots of blankets, I would be freezing and typically I would be woken up from a psychic dream. I'll give you one psychic dream I had. Um, I dreamed of, um, well, I'll just say that I dreamed about a lot of people dying. I dreamed that they were all wet. I dreamed that they were fires and that they were all from another country and it looked like Asia. And the dream was actually very elaborate. I won't go into all of it, but um, I woke up freezing and I was very sad for at least a couple of weeks. So I was feeling so much emotion, which there's my empathic nature again. So this very disturbing, emotional dream that I had, um, I realized two weeks later when it was splashed all over the news that it was the Thai tsunami in 2004. And um, I'm sure that it sent emotional waves, energetic waves all over the world. And people like me who are sensitive were picking up on it before it happened and during and after. Because a lot of people were affected emotionally and the energy that we all share and that we're all connected with was affected by it. Um, so that's just one example. Um, another example was um, I woke up after a dream freezing cold and I was jolted up out of bed um, because I was so cold and whenever that started to happen I was like wow that dream was psychic that must mean something's going to happen well sure enough um, I had a dream um, about my boyfriend at the time um, and I was probably 21 22 and he um, he had been cheating on me and um, in the dream I saw all of the concert tickets and I was saw her name written down on a piece of paper and I knew her name and I called him and I said you know who's blank and you know and sure enough um, he had been cheating on me so you know it's a handy very handy um, gift at times but those are just a couple of, of examples that where I started to really understand wow I have this gift um, Probably at a very, gosh, as early as me being a teenager, I started studying astrology and I started studying tarot. And especially in for the astrology, I started studying formally to really learn some of the science behind it. And when I started um, using those tools, um, I would do readings for people. I would read people's charts. Um, I had some very psychic experiences. Um, there were a couple of just parties that I would go to and it was just a fun thing I was doing and I remember um, people stopping me at the event and going, how did you see that in the chart or where did you see that in the cards? Um, and I was having psychic clairvoyance and also clairsentience and wasn't really aware of it, but it was just coming through. And that's um, a really important thing to understand. There are a lot of these tools that you can use and there's so many different ways to get more open. In fact, I think there are as many individual ways to become open to your psychic abilities as there are individual people. Everybody's individual. But these sorts of tools really can start to open you up. So um, over the years, um, it has really grown and grown and um, it's become more of a practice for me. So I'm going to be teaching on the show a lot about astrology because it's something I love. I think it is an amazing um, tool that has a lot of symbols and it can really help people learn about themselves and it can also help people um, open up their psychic abilities um, as well as tarot. I'm going to be teaching a lot about that. 
so as I was doing more of these readings and this work and starting to think maybe I'm psychic, maybe I have some of these talents and gifts, um, I was doing the rest of my life. And I certainly wasn't talking about that to people. Um, I'm from the South and my family, I never talked about it with my family. My family um, would never have been critical and they're not critical about it at all. They've been very accepting. But in the South in general, you know, there's a very um, more conservative contingency. And it's not something that, especially, you know, 20 years ago that people were talking about all the time. So um, I just kept doing my life and um, I have a penchant for business. So I started a company and the company has grown. It's done really well. And I um, actually sell to corporations. I sell furniture, commercial furniture. So um, I would say about 10 years ago, my practice with readings really started to take off on the side and it was all by referral. And my business partner <laughs> knew that I was doing this and a lot of people in my corporate business world started hearing through the grapevine on the down low that I was doing this. So I started getting more and more requests to do readings. And about 10 years ago, I sat down with my business partner and again, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, we're in the deep south. And I said, can I come out of the closet with this? Because it could really affect the company. And I was really, really nervous and scared that it would hurt my business, that maybe my corporate clients would be, think it's weird or think we're not legitimate or whatever about it. And my fearless Aries eight on the Enneagram business partner said, who cares? It's fine. You got to be yourself. So with her support, and I thank her every day for it, I literally came out and it is very much like, you know, other people when they come out, I'm telling you, I was nervous, I was scared, um, but I just wouldn't deny it if people asked me in a business setting. And I started saying, I'm a business owner. Hi, my name's Laura. I'm a business owner and I'm a clairvoyant, clairsentient, where I'm an intuitive or empathic or whatever word I felt like using at the time. And really anticipating backlash. And when I tell you nothing could have been further from that reality, uh, everybody came out of the woodwork supporting me. Um, everybody came to me with a story about how either they had the gift or they knew somebody who had the gift or they asked me to do a reading for them. So it's really been a wonderful thing, and I think it's a big indication as to really where the world is heading right now. Um, I think the whole world is becoming more conscious, and I believe the whole world is starting to have more of a language for these topics, and it's becoming more normal. And that's really what this network's about. It's about taking um, these intuitive abilities or these spiritual topics or these metaphysical topics and incorporating them into ordinary life so that it really, like Jamie Butler says, it's not woo-woo, it's true-true. I love that saying. That's what we're all up to here. I'm a normal, sane business person from a normal, sane family in Atlanta, Georgia, who has abnormal gifts and who uses them every day to help other people and to help myself and to help my company. So I'll get to another frequently asked question, which is, do you ever use this at your company? Uh, you bet I do. I use it all the time at my company. Um, we look at my chart for projects. We, I can be very empathic in meetings when I meet people. I do readings around um, all kinds of things when it comes to the business. And um, my business partner actually loves it, and we use it a lot. Um, I really, in these next episodes um, this year, I want to help you viewers learn how to understand your own psychic abilities or recognize them. Um, and also, how do you use these tools um, to give you an advantage in your life in business, to give you an advantage in your relationships, 
and also just help you live a better life so that you can thrive and be more conscious and more knowledgeable and just expand as a person. Expand spiritually, expand energetically. Um, that's what this is all about. So if I can help one of you um, be more conscious or learn a little bit more about yourself or to be able to use your gifts a little bit more, this show's for you and this show is gonna have been worth it for me. Some of the show topics that I'm going to have this year are astrology, tarot, psychic protection. I'm gonna be doing famous people's astrology charts. And I also wanna say, please let me know what topics you'd like. If you see me do a show and there's something more you'd like for me to say about it or something more you'd like to hear about, please let me know. And please comment, you guys. I'm going to be reading the boards I'm going to be looking for your comments. I really want to get to know you guys, and I want to um, have a dialogue with you guys about the show because the show is by me for you. So I want this show to be a conversation this year. I'm actually a Capricorn, you guys, and anybody who knows about a Capricorn is going to know that the show is going to be practical. So any knowledge that I'm bringing here, I'm going to really want it to be useful to you as the viewer. I want you to watch my show and be able to take something away from it that you can use to make your life better and to make you be able to thrive more in your life. That's my goal. Thank you so much for watching today, my first show. And next week, I'm going to be talking about astrology basics. And y'all, we're jumping right in to the astrology topic. So it's going to be really interesting. So stay tuned.